Our brand new cycle of basic space lands is now available for purchase at www.itresolvesmtg.com. What's going on guys? Welcome to another gameplay video today. Uh, this is a bit of a special deck. Uh, we're we're kind of rounding out Aquaria Standard and about to be jumping into Corset 2021, so I'm taking a lot more deck suggestions and just kind of trying out some fun things. Uh, this was in a mass deck, originally kind of submitted by uh, It's Just Wild. Uh, in our Discord. Uh, so thank you for the initial the initial recommendation here. Um, Turn one Soul Ring, our normal uh, deck submitter, kind of took the reins though uh, and said, "Hey, let me let me make this a little bit more competitive." They were very kind and working together on this, which I really appreciate. And so uh, this is kind of the culmination of both of their work. So I do want to credit both of them with kind of getting this one together. Uh, and I'm very excited to try it. Uh, I initially kind of built my own amass list because uh, I believe it's just wild kind of submitted an idea for one um and so i just kind of wanted to see if i could build my own uh and i it didn't get the way it didn't get there the way that i would have liked it to uh and so this one kind of incorporates some different elements that we'll get to talk about so uh, obviously a grixis list uh and a lot of very relatively cheap things mostly in the uh two drop slot here so uh to look at the amass stuff first uh Lazatop Reaver here is a very common card just because it does it does very very well in sacrifice lists uh it's a one two for two when it comes into play you amass one pretty straightforward but it gives you that two for one value very very quickly uh, we also have Dreadhorde Invasion, which is a good way to uh, continuously kind of keep yourself uh, in the game every single turn. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you amass one and lose a life. Uh, but whenever a zombie token you control with power six or greater attacks, it actually gets lifelink. So uh, this kind of has a built-in way to hopefully gain some of that life back. Certainly, it's a little bit tricky because if they bounce the token uh, before it gets to six or uh, if they happen to kill the token in any way... Uh, before it gets to six then you're just continuously losing a life every turn and you're not getting to that six so it's going to be a little bit tricky but uh, I do have high hopes for this card this is one that I really really like this has been around obviously for a while but very very powerful card uh, to look at some of the other ones here uh, Vizier of the Scorpion uh, is a 1-1 one, one for three which doesn't sound amazing but when it enters the battlefield you amass one and zombie tokens you control have death touch uh, obviously, all of the uh, amass tokens are zombie army creatures, so uh, this gives them all death touch, which is really, really cool. Uh, and I'm very excited. This also technically gives this death touch, the the Dreadhorde Butcher death touch as well. Uh, so this actually has a lot of synergy in the deck. Uh, Gleaming Overseer is the other kind of amass lord, uh, so to speak. It's a 1-4 for 3. Uh, it also amasses one when it enters the battlefield, but zombie tokens you control have zomb uh, hexproof and menace. Let me actually, I should correct myself here, zombie tokens, not zombies, so this does not uh, hit these. I do want to apologize for that, but um, Gleaming Overseer does give hexproof and menace to all of your tokens, uh, and honestly, that is huge uh, because... Again, I mentioned with Dreadhorde Invasion, it's a little bit difficult sometimes if they have a lot of removal or a bounce spell or something along those lines. Uh, any kind of targeted card, this gets you around uh, because it does give them hexproof. It makes it a little bit easier to keep them on the field uh, and actually deal the damage because of that menace. So I do think that that's really, really important. Death Touch hopefully going to give us a way to kind of trade off and uh, do a really, really good job of controlling some of the decks that are probably a little bit faster. Uh, some of those creature decks. So very, very helpful. Uh, another amass card here is Widespread Brutality. It's a mass to, uh, excuse me, it costs four, one, a black, and two red. Uh, a mass to, then the army you amassed deals damage equal to its power to each non-army creature. Uh, very, very interesting wording on this for a lot of reasons. So, and some interesting synergy that I found uh, when playtesting my own version of this list, where uh, if you attack in, give the creature token lifelink, then you play this. Uh, you can gain a lot of life. There's some really, really cool synergies there that I'm hoping we'll get to see. But uh, this is very key wording because it is going to hit uh, things that are, you know, non-army creatures, which does include, you know, Gleaming Overseer, for instance, or Lazatop Reaver. But uh, very, very easy to kind of take over a game if we're up against a creature deck with a card like this because we can kind of finish off their board and then hopefully swing in for a lot. Um other cards that we've got in here, though, that are not necessarily built around the amass stuff. Uh, Fibblefip is in here to help us draw a little bit. 
but also just give us a creature uh, to kind of block with and hopefully soak up some damage. It gives a very good target also with Thassa Deep Dwelling. Uh, Thassa is really, really an interesting include, not one that I necessarily thought about in my version, uh, but it makes a lot of sense. You get to uh, bounce a lot of these guys who are going to amass again for you. Uh, and then hopeful or you know fibble fipped hopefully draw some cards and so you've got a lot of ways to to really really gain multiple triggers uh, not only that but it helps you tap the opponent's creatures if you need to uh, and hopefully deal in damage especially if you've got something like menace you can tap one of their two creatures down maybe and then hopefully swing in for for a good bit of damage um, other cards we do have dread horde butcher in here to kind of get some damage in early uh, Haster 1-1, one, one, uh, anytime it deals damage to a player or Planeswalker, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Uh, and then, of course, when it dies, it deals its damage to target, uh, to any target, excuse me. Uh, which is nice in tandem with things like Widespread Brutality, where, you know, it's probably going to die, but uh, it obviously still gets a good bit of damage in. Uh, other cards, we do have Heartless Act as a way to, uh, just, just a removal spell on this list. And then, of course, Thought Erasure to kind of pull things out of the opponent's hand. Uh, as far as lands go, we are running 23, which I think is about right, given our curve. Uh, two islands, three swamps, one mountain. Uh, looks like the full gambit of uh, Shocklands. We've got two Malice, two, or excuse me, one Epiphany, and two Temple of Deceit. Uh, and that's it. Pretty straightforward list, but I think it's going to be kind of fun. Uh, I really, really like this one. Uh, it did take a culmination of both of their efforts to make this happen, and so I really do appreciate the work on this one. Uh, I will go ahead and say, I... Have not playtested this one. Uh, normally, uh, especially lately, we've been trying to playtest a good bit before we play any of the games. Uh, just to ensure that these decks aren't like complete misses. Uh, because occasionally, you know, that happens and that's fine. Um, but we did not playtest this one. I, uh, I'm, we're, we're going to just see how it goes, is the takeaway. So hopefully it goes well. Um, and I do think we keep this. This is a decent starting hand. We've got a little bit of interaction here. We can get this going very, very early, which is great. And then, of course, we've got the Laza Top Reavers here. Uh, so let's give it a shot. Uh, and again, just uh, want to mention to everybody, if you are interested and in, uh, in submitting your own deck list, uh, you certainly can do so. Anybody is welcome to. Uh, our Discord is down below. That's the best place to do it. We have a channel dedicated to that. Uh, and so we'd more than welcome that kind of thing. Um, first of all, I hate this deck, though. Uh, we know what this deck is. I absolutely hate this deck. Ah, tasty. Part of me really wants to just kill this. Um, and I don't know if that's 100% the correct play or not, to be honest. Um, hmm. It just gets out of hand very, very quickly. Let's be defensive a little bit. I'm doing this now because if I don't, they can cycle, but that thing gets out of hand very, very quickly. Uh, and we are going to be dealing some damage to ourselves here, so I'm a little bit terrified of, of the Flourishing Fox here. Uh, not to mention, if they get us down to a particular life total, it's very easy for us to just lose off of a Zenith Flare, which is why I hate this deck. Um, this, not quite as worried about because, of course, you know... We've got creatures to block it. Yes, we're going to be taking some damage here, uh, but that Flourishing Fox in particular is very difficult for us to actually uh, deal with after the fact. So uh, let's do this. Uh, this is going to keep them from attacking in. It's a nice little two for one also, so very, very happy um, to get this down. Uh, next turn, we get to play this out as well as the Laza Top Reaver, most likely. Um, looks like the pretty standard Boros cycling deck, but... Also, I just want to mention, uh, we did release, uh, a video earlier today kind of talking about the Chaos Draft pack that, uh, you know, if you follow us on Instagram, we, we posted that photo up not too long ago. Uh, and it was it was fun to do, um, but uh, I just wanted to mention that, you know, it's an interesting concept. I don't know if we're actually going to go through with it uh, in terms of actually making it a real thing. Uh, I'd love to, don't get me wrong, but uh, I just don't know how viable it truly is to do that. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe it is, and if certainly if you guys all have a lot of, you know, this was a bad block on their end because we now get to kill this. Um, 
certainly if you guys are really, really interested in it, then, you know, we'll certainly consider it. But uh, it's one of those things that I feel like uh, not only has the bad repack stigma, which I think is, uh, you know, a fair stigma. I, I don't like repacks generally either, so don't get me wrong on that. But um, I definitely don't like that, um, you know, it has that. But also, uh, I, I just don't want to be putting stuff out there if people aren't going to, you know, truly love it and um, feel like they're getting the value that they need out of it. So we'll we'll do the best we can with it, and I'd, I'd love to do it. We'll just see. That's all. That's all I can say. Uh, the problem here is we're going to do our best to get them down uh, to zero, but chances are they're going to get a Zenith Flare at some point and just be able to win. Uh, I hate that, but that's just how it works. They've drawn enough cards where I don't think that that's unlikely. <clears throat> this is a Cyclone deck. That's cool. Uh, we're also drawing just a ton of lands, which is not super helpful uh, or conducive to a winning environment. <laughs> um, hopefully you guys are really excited about Corset 2021 uh, we've already pre-ordered yep there it is Sleep happens every time I hate that card I hate that card so much um, hopefully though you guys are excited about uh, 2021 I really really am we went ahead and pre-ordered uh, on this account a number of cards so we can kind of get that going uh, very very quickly uh, since it's coming out in actually just a few days I believe um, and so I'm really thrilled, uh, to be playing with a brand new set. Hopefully, um, you know, we saw Ikoria did number, uh, uh, wonders for our channel. Um, in particular, we, we kind of jumped into the gameplay with Ikoria and it's worked out great for us. I mean, we've now got, um, I would say a very strong community, um, of some really amazing people. And so I, I feel very, very fortunate and very lucky that we've got that, but also, just really excited to uh, to see what Core 2021 brings us, because uh, I do think it's it's looking pretty solid. If I'm being honest, <laughs> it's a very very solid uh, uh, set, in my opinion. I think um, if you missed our podcast episode, we also brought that back. Man, there's a lot of announcements. Um, we did bring the podcast episodes back finally uh, after many many efforts uh, to actually make that happen. It finally worked. Um, it was a bit frustrating, but you know, we're here, we're back, uh, and so very, very excited to have that, but, um, this is always fun, because we're gonna attack in and see if they miss the, and they don't get it, we just get to trade off with the Crawl Harpooner, um, but anyway, so very happy to have that back, and you kind of probably got an idea for our thoughts on, uh, how the set was working and looking, um, I think it's a very good representation of how powerful magic is turning, uh, it's, it's kind of a push, uh, is what I will say, uh, and I don't know how I feel about that, but that's okay. Um, it does look like a really, really nice set, so I'm excited to try it out, so we'll see. Okay. Interesting. Um, uh, yeah, let's get the temple down. Um, now's a decent time for that. We'll put that on the bottom, actually. Um, and we'll get this down. I think now we're kind of looking for like overseers and things like that. Uh, since we've got Thassa, we'll be able to bounce a lot, uh, which is good. Or excuse me, flicker a lot. Should be using the correct word. Um, but next turn, we can actually get a Thassa down. Um, Pelucranos, very good. Very, very good. Uh, yeah, let's do this. In that case, I'm actually just going to do this. We should have played the Watery Grave technically, but... Um, this just means that they're going to fight this first, most likely, uh, which is perfectly fine with me. Uh, and then we can obviously uh, start flickering some things, even if it's just the Reaver with uh, Thassa. Going to be helpful. The Great Hinge. This is just a Jund value deck. Like, this is interesting. Um, I've not seen this kind of deck before, so... Uh, in this capacity, I should say. I uh, really like Pelucranos, though. Holy crap, is that card good. It is, like, stupid good. Um, oh, good. I can literally publish. Guys, look at this. We were just talking about the Chaos Drafts, and now I get to actually make them public. That's exciting. Um, so we'll see what they want to do here. Arboreal Grazer. Sure. That's fine. Don't particularly care. Um, they can attack in for six here if they want. Uh, 
It doesn't look like they want to, but that's fine. Um, thought erasure is interesting. Hmm. I think we're going to thought erasure, to be honest. <clears throat> I don't know what this deck is looking to do necessarily. Ooh. Ooh. Man, got a lot of good stuff. I think we take that. Um, don't particularly need that. They can fling. That's fine. Um, hmm. I don't think we'll attack here. I'm not really sure what the best plan of action there that they can take is here. <clears throat> uh, Casualties of War is just way too good of a card when we know we were going to be playing out Dreadhorde Invasion there. Um, they can obviously kill a lot of things, so... Hopefully Dreadhorde Invasion helps us keep in the uh, in the game here, but this is an interesting uh, matchup. Not one I expected necessarily. Pro Blue is a bit frustrating given that we have Thassa to tap things down, but that's not really the worst thing in the world either. I assume they're trying to kill this. Yeah. They want to get rid of the Death Touch here. I was about to say, if they target the Reaver, that's like 100% just a mistake, but that's fine. They are still not attacking. Interesting. Um, okay, well, let's just play Thassa. Uh, no attacks. Just go ahead and flicker this. Um, gives us another counter here. And we're going to take a pretty big hit this time, no doubt. Um... They don't get to hit anything off of that, which is kind of nice. Uh, what is Exile Target Opponent's Graveyard? That actually doesn't really affect us either. Um, okay. We do have to be very cautious with this fling in hand. Because um, obviously they do have the opportunity to kind of deal some damage with that. Um, I'm going to block there. Uh, the reason I'm not blocking here is this gets trampled. This does not. Um, also gets rid of a counter here. Not that that's a huge deal uh, by any means, but it, it does kind of help a little bit. Uh, and so now they could fling, get rid of the 4-4, four, four, or just kill, like hit us. But um, we'll see what they want to do. Chances are I don't think we get there. I mean, they just have a lot of power. Uh, on the field, unfortunately. Another Dreadhorde Invasion. Um, do that. Do this. Um, okay, so... Gets lifelink, but they can just, like, instant speed kill this if they would like to. Uh, they can fling this at it if they'd like. Or they can just block there. That's fine. Um, this gains us six life back, which is helpful. But again, chances are they're going to kill it, and then that leaves us in a pretty bad position. Um, the fact that this has trample is a big, a big problem for us. Uh, just because, oh, well, okay, they're going to get rid of it. Fair enough. Um... So we do get our 1-1 one, one back, which is kind of nice because we do get to bounce this. I like the, the addition of Thassa. Uh, turn 1 Soul Ring, that was, that was a pretty cool inclusion. Um, but obviously, didn't work there. Right. So, I hope we can get there. <laughs> uh, next turn, we'll obviously be... I mean, we're going to be taking some damage here. There is no doubt. Uh, ooh. Okay, I think we just lose then. Let's see, four, five, ten. And then we take two damage on our own and kill ourselves. So we're going to lose to our own Dreadhorde invasion. Oh, man. Or they could just kill us, but yeah, they just fling it. Okay. Woo! Two very rough games. 
Um, all right, that's okay. We are trying something out, and this, I mean, hey, we knew this was a risk going into it. No big worries. Let's jump into our uh, last game of this video really, really quickly. Uh, so far, we're at the uh, we're at the twenty minute mark. We're doing okay. Let's jump into it, guys. Um, again, I do really appreciate the submission. Um, so please feel free if you're interested. Feel free to uh, to jump in with the submission as well. I also want to mention um, I'm working on some some JDC stuff. Uh, if you don't know what the JDC is, it's the Jank Deck Competition. Uh, this is a very interactive hand, which I like. Um, the, the Jank Deck competition was something that Will and I kind of started um, like a month or so ago with the intention of doing it on like a weekly or a monthly basis. Uh, and I really, really enjoy it. It's fun. Uh, it's very silly. And we just kind of get to go in, have a little bit of fun, not do anything too crazy and, you know, just see what can happen. Um, unfortunately, uh, we, we kind of weren't able to... Oh, this, these are all so good. Um... What do we care the most about? Maybe Paradise Druid, actually. It's kind of a silly one, but I'm gonna get rid of Paradise Druid. Um, so it it was it's a it was a really fun idea where we literally just you know we each played a really silly janky deck uh, and hoped that you know we could get there. Uh, and it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, let's do this and let's do this. Uh, chances are they're just going to mutate a, a Great Horde onto this, which is perfectly fine. Um, yeah, this doesn't give counters, so that's important. Um, so anyway, we, we kind of started that idea and then never really got to make it happen, uh, other than the first video. Uh, but we're taking steps now to actually make it happen and for real, you know, make that a thing. And I'm really, really excited about that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, really? That was kind of a silly. Huh. Wonder why they did that. Um, whoops, nope. This. Uh, now we get to flicker our vizier. Um, yeah, that seems great. I think they didn't realize it had death touch, obviously, but that was a bad play on their end for sure. Uh, anyway, um, so we're taking steps to kind of bring the JDC back a little bit uh, and see if we can actually make that happen with other content creators, which I'm really excited about. Uh, in addition to just some people that are, you know, close with us that we've worked with before, that kind of stuff. Uh, and so I'm actually really, really excited because I do think it's going to be a fun time. Uh, and we get to hang out with other content creators, which is like, you know, obviously not something we always get to do. So it's... I think going to be a really special time, a really fun time, uh, and I hope you guys uh, will will enjoy that and, um, you know, submit some decks. I think we'll do a bigger, more formal announcement closer to time, um, so that way we can kind of ask for your deck suggestions and things like that, but uh, so far, I am, uh, I'm just really excited about it. I think it's going to be a great time. Uh, we're just going to kill this. Um... I kind of just want to keep our, our momentum going here. Um, unfortunately, three widespread brutalities is not super helpful at the moment. Um, just go ahead and attack in. Uh, and we'll end the turn. Bouncing Vizier. Um, really like the addition of Fossa. I'm glad we get to do that. Uh, what's nice, too, is we get, you know, they'll play something this turn. We just kind of get to tap it down. Uh, so we can attack in next turn, uh, or, you know, depending on if we need to, we can widespread brutality, but, uh, we will see. Uh, this is the Sultai version, so my assumption is they've got things like Dirgebat, uh, in here, which is a worry, uh, because that's a very, obviously, powerful card. Um, if we could not draw lands, that would be good. Um, uh, cancel. Chances are they're not going to block this. I'm just guessing, but... Whoops, cancel. Um... Do that. Um... I'm just going to tap this down this turn. If they want to mutate onto it, that's totally fine. Um, but that gives us a way to kind of, kind of deal with stuff. Um, 
I kind of wish we had a Dreadhorde invasion, uh, solely because of, we're pretty close to the lifelink realm. And I think this is the problem with this deck, by the way, is that it is a bit slow. You can kind of tell, like, we're we're pushing turn, we're on turn six, seven right now, and like, that's not great. Um, but this does give us, you know, some tools at least that we can hopefully make it work. But it's just uh, a bit slow. Um, let's just kill it. They've got hysterics in hand and things like that, so we really don't want to give them options for life draining and all that jazz. Um, it's a pretty straightforward deck, though, I will say. Uh, there are a few little tricky interactions, but for us so far, at least, it's not been all that, all that tricky, um, which I'm perfectly fine with. It's nice to have kind of a straightforward deck. Last week, we played so many control decks, which, hey, they were all really fun. Don't get me wrong, but um, it definitely took a, took a lot out of it. Um, so it's nice to play something a little straightforward, so to speak. Okay. We'll tap this down probably at the end of the turn, most likely, but we'll see. Get to gain their life, which is kind of annoying. Uh, I'm holding on to this, by the way, because I don't really want to lose our Vizier. Uh, it's a great target for this. <clears throat> if we draw another one, I'm all in for something like that, but... We really don't need to at this point. We can just keep tapping stuff down, so. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and do this. Thought Erasure, I will go ahead and play. That's pretty helpful. Um, ooh. Yeah, we're going to take that. Um, do we want that? It's not a bad card to have, honestly. I'm going to... It's not great, but I am going to keep it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and I think we'll just attack in here. Playing it a little bit slow, but next turn, if we play our cards right, we can uh, we can kind of do do a lot here. Let's do this. <coughs> um, I'm gonna do the same thing that we did the last time. Just keep this guy tapped. Uh, I don't love that, but this is that's their life gainer. Uh, and it's also a good target for them to mutate onto. So I'm kind of in the camp of we just need to keep this thing tapped. <laughs> um, I assume they would go for Sterics here. Looks like they got a creature. That's fine. That's not a big deal. Um, let's do this. And we don't even have to do that. Let's just do this. Really didn't even have to do that, but hey, we got there. Uh, so we did get a win that time. That felt pretty good. Uh, it's a little slow. That's my takeaway so far. We'll we'll summarize in video two, obviously. Sorry for the frame rates on that last game, by the way. I know it was a little rough, but um, we'll summarize in video two a little bit further, so that way you guys can kind of figure out what exactly my thoughts are on this. But if, uh, if you want to try this one out, I do think it's fun. It's a cool way to uh, focus on the amass stuff. Um, it's a little bit of a tricky mechanic to really get to work well, uh, but I do really like the effort on uh, making this deck. I think it's a fun one, so I do appreciate, again, It's Just Wild as well as Turn 1 Soul Ring for uh, helping make this one possible. Thank you, guys. Uh, and again, anybody that wants to suggest a deck, please do. But hope you enjoyed this video. I'll, of course, jump into Part 2 very, very soon, so do stay tuned for that. But thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in Part 2.